Hello and welcome to the episode 164 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. More live performances, the last set with Jimmy Nichol and a written plea are on our menu today. Let's start with the last performance of the Silver Beatles with Tommy Moore on drums. The event took place on the 13th of June 1960 at the Jacaranda Coffee Bar in Liverpool, England. Moore had left the band on the 11th of June, as we saw in episode 162 of this podcast, but he accepted to fulfill this last engagement as a special favour. From this moment on, the Silver Beatles were to change drummer often. In one short-lived attempt, it was Paul McCartney who decided to leave the guitar and try and play the instrument himself. In the anthology book, George Harrison commented that Paul wasn't much worse than some of the people the band tried out, but, in the end, they decided to look elsewhere. Another evening on the stage of the Top 10 Club in Hamburg for the Beatles in 1961. This time, it was Pete Best who performed drums duty. Second double feature in a row in 1962. The lads, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. They performed alone in the matinee and topped the bill including Pete McLean and the Dakotas and the Denisons in the evening. And we get another double feature in 1963, this time with two concerts in the same night. The Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, played the Palace Theatre Club in Stockport and the Southern Sporting Club in Manchester. The first show had been booked before the band's Please Please Me success and saw them playing for 30 minutes in front of 300 screaming fans. As we've seen in previous episodes, Beatles manager Brian Epstein insisted on the band honouring most of the bookings they had made, even when they could have commanded much bigger fees in larger venues. And it seems that the lads didn't spare themselves either. Their performance was described by ex-barman Tony Philbin, quoted in Beatlesbible.com, as energetic, special and memorable. When this first engagement was honoured, the band drove 10 miles to their second gig, in the larger Southern Sporting Club Dance Hall, as we said. The concert wasn't particularly remarkable, as my day won't be, unless you decide to act on your fabness and support this podcast. Put a like, comment, consider making even a small donation via PayPal. You'll find all the details on www.simonmas.com support, but rest assured that every little thing you do will help me to keep going and create more music-related content for you to enjoy. What's not to love? Thank you! On the 13th of June 1964, the Beatles, still with Jimmy Nichols subbing for Ringo Starr, played for the second straight night at the Centennial Hall in Adelaide, Australia, with another two sets in front of a combined audience of 6,000 people. Previously, the band had greeted some 4,000 fans camped outside their hotel and presided over an afternoon reception in honour of the organisers of the various Beatles Australian fan clubs. Meanwhile, delayed in San Francisco, Ringo Starr was reunited with the passport he had forgotten in London and managed to board the flight to Sydney today. Let's close the episode with a 1966 plea from Top of the Pops producer Johnny Stewart. On this date, Stewart wrote to Brian Epstein to try and persuade the Beatles to find the time to appear live on the 16th of June show, or on any show in the near future, after two and a half years of waiting for the band to materialise in what had become the premier British pop show on TV. Epstein put the request through to the band on the next day, and the Beatles decided to accept to appear on the show, despite their mounting reclusiveness from live performances and promotional events of any kind. But enough for today! 
In tomorrow's episode, we will witness the reunion of the Fabs and the continuation of their 1964 war tour. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.